guys, YX 10 Minutes of Research here, everyone's favorite YouTuber who stutters and mispronounces, and today we're going to be talking about Despel Omega. Are they Nazis? Now, I know, guys, I'm kind of overstating my welcome with this band because I did the album review for it and whatnot, but really this has be kind of become bothersome. I guess for me personally, maybe it's because I'm just such a fan of them. I have such high regards for Despel Omega as they're such an influential force within black metal, but over the past month, a lot more sites, a lot more people have stated that now Despel Omega are Nazis, they're racial, they're controversial, and whatnot. And I feel like now this uproar really started ever since The Needle Drop did a review for the latest album. He gave it an 8 out of 10. And within less than a day, he took down that review and had this ginormous community post about why he took down said review. Which, in his community post, he talks about Miko Aspa as a part of this project, that he has a lot of NS ties and whatnot, that he's a very controversial individual. Okay, well, you're kind of like 10 years late to the party with this as... This is just kind of like information that's really widely known. Like, even when I first got into black metal and I found out who Miko Aspa was, like, immediately, within the day I found out about him, I knew all about his controversial past, all the controversial things he says, his NS ties and whatnot. Because blatantly, if you know who Miko Aspa is, you know of him because of how controversial of an individual this guy is. So, to me, it just came up really too short of an explanation, especially since The Needle Drops has done multiple reviews for Death Spell Omega, and I figured he would have known that by now. But anyway, he states that if he's going to do reviews for Death Spell Omega, or any controversial band for that matter, he has to put a disclaimer in the beginning of said review, which he did for Burzum, and he did for Peste Noir. Okay, I get it and I understand it, no problem whatsoever. You don't want to support that or give them projects attention. I understand that. But see, the problem with taking down your Despel Omega review is that this mirrors another review that you totally didn't bring up. He also has a review a handful of years ago where he did a review for Dizma. All right, and in that review, there's no disclaimer because Dizma has a very, very controversial individual, Craig Pillard, who has a noise project called Storm Fuhrer. That project is off of satanic skinhead propaganda, which they state in their biography that they're all for any type of explicit lyrical themes from racism to everything in between. And the Needle Drops never brought that up, and no one called them out for it, because no one, I think, really dived into it, and obviously he didn't, and it was just swept under the rug, and the years went by. So for me personally, how I look at this whole situation that the Needle Drops kind of handled the Deathville Omega thing, he could have just been silent, and everything would have blown over, because for me personally, people really watch him for his bigger name reviews, because he gets a lot more attention, and that's where his audience really kind of sides more on. So really, if he never said anything about Despot Omega, I really don't think there would have been this big of a fallout. Which then leads to Banger TV, because immediately, a few days after the Needle Drops did that, they did their handful of reviews that they do at the end of the month where they get voted in five records to review and one of them was the latest Death Spell Omega. Which is funny that they state that, oh, I really didn't want to review this because the people voted for it. Well, newsflash, you could have just not reviewed it in general and kept on with your way. But since you did that, all you really did was gave Death Spell Omega, who, you know, are... Nazis, as you put them, more attention, which probably just led to more sales for these guys. And with their little review for Deathspell Omega, you can see that they really just pumble down on the criticism with this band, because their opening statement has nothing to do with Deathspell Omega. It's about Miko Aspa right away. Deathspell Omega, the furnace of Palaginesia. This is some 
uh, French black metal that's also uh, made by white power pedophiles. So part of the reason I didn't want to talk about this album, and shame on you for making me talk about it, is uh, the singer of the band has a long history of making uh, music where he advocates the killing of Jews. Uh, he has interviews where you can see him saying the N-word. Uh, he has interviews saying that uh, the only good thing about Nazi Germany was, uh, was that they killed a bunch of Jews. Uh, and hey, if killing Jews and being racist isn't upsetting to you enough, because apparently for a bunch of you it isn't, he also used to have a noise project uh, called Nicole 12, which was a pedophile-based noise project. Now, the problem with that is right from the start, they kind of like guilt trip you for even listening to this album or talking about this album. And this was requested by the fans for them to review, and they go right off the bat with, Miko Asp is such a terrible person, he's done this and that and such terrible things. Oh, right off the bat, you should hate this band because of him. Here's the thing. In the latest interview with Death Spell Omega, which is like their first two they've done in 15 years, they answer quite a lot of questions on people's mind. And though a lot of people kind of criticize the interview for it being very pretentious, it goes very in-depth with it. But to summarize it within just smaller words without it being so detailed, Miko Aspa is just kind of like this individual to them that's just a vessel. He has no artistic freedom with Death Spell Omega. He has no say about the lyrical content or the music being performed. The two real members, one who's still anonymous and Kristen, is basically, they are the heart, the brain, and the muscle behind this project. And they have basically all the artistic freedom within this band. So Miko Aspa, he's just a vessel. He does his vocals, and they both go their separate ways. As they also state in this interview, that even though they have two different political views on the world, they don't want that to separate their overall goal with the music, the lyrical content, and just the theology of Death Spell Omega. So right there with that little sentence, they're saying that even though Nico Aspa is on the far right, and we're different from him, political view-wise, which would almost blatantly state they're on, like, the left to a certain circumstance. They don't let political beliefs interfere with the overall work and construction of Death Spell Omega. As well, Banger TV criticizes Death Spell Omega's lyrical content, stating, These are just bad lyrics. It's a rambling, insane manifesto from a guy who simultaneously manages to be overly wordy while saying absolutely nothing. Which obviously shows they put zero effort into digesting these albums and putting some research into it. Though it may come off a little pretentious to some degree, it's quite creatively done as if you were to do some research into each individual song and the lyrical content within Death Spell Omega, there's a concept behind this. There's a lot of, I guess, research about theology and philosophy with all these different writers and quotes and biblical verses that kind of becomes almost like a jigsaw puzzle for the mind of lyrical content, which makes it just another thing to add to Death Spell Omega with their creativity. And again, the reason I bring this up is that we're calling Death Spell Omega Nazis and, you know, an NSBM band, but at no fucking point does the lyrical content of Death Spell Omega have anything to do with that. If anything, if you were to read into it a little bit, there are songs that literally take the piss on authoritarian views, but, you know, as Banger TV says, it's just lyrical content with no meaning. Another little funny thing about Banger TV that they talked about is towards the end of their review, they said this. You please don't buy this album. Uh, don't support these people. Yeah, guys, heard you loud and clear. Now, finally, the reason why I talk all about this is I'm just a big fan of them, and it's really unfair that a band like Death Spell Omega, that's just such a big name in the underground French black metal scene that I think is just so influential to this day is labeled Nazis. And to me, the word Nazi is a very powerful and evil word, all right? Just look at that word and look into the fabric of history, okay? It's such an infamous fucking word. And we're just going to stamp the whole band Nazis because of Miko Aspa that really has 
no influence whatsoever besides his vocals that he doesn't even do the lyrical content for. To me, I had to talk about this and bring up some of this bullshit because of platforms like The Needle Drop and Banger TV that have such a massive following, there are going to be a lot of people within their followings that are just going to be like, well, they said it, and they're the big name, so I'll just agree with them and not do an ounce of research that would kind of contradict their statements, which is why I felt like I had to do this video. So that's it, guys, for this little topic right here. Really curious to know what you think of all this and what you think of Despel Omega now. So like always guys, thanks for watching, liking, supporting, and subscribing. You guys are the best, and good listens.